Welcome everyone to Class Report Insights. I'm Mike Smith and this is John Christensen and uh, today we'd like to spend a few minutes uh, talking about some research we just published on AWS and healthcare. So John, um, why did we do this research? We've seen healthcare organizations talk about the cloud for you know, five plus years. And as we've heard that, we've been kind of biding our time, waiting to figure out the right time to do more research on it. And it feels like it's real enough now that there were enough organizations that had made the, the dive into the cloud and that had started to do work there that we could really highlight some cool things, some use cases that were happening. So uh, we were able to go out and reach out to AWS's leading healthcare organizations, their healthcare clients, and really find out what was happening in the cloud. Fantastic. Well, so what did we learn? So as we talked to these organizations, nearly three quarters of them uh, said that they had been able to re uh, attain some sort of financial ROI, that they had saved money by doing their, their project in the cloud. So it was cheaper than trying to do it on-premise. Uh, we also saw over half of these organizations say that they were saving time so that they were able to do these projects faster and quicker uh, by, by leveraging the cloud. So it was really cool that they were able to articulate that so easily. So time savings and, and cost were a couple of major, major yes. outcomes that these folks yep. uh, experienced. What were some of the use cases? What did you, um, so obviously um, it wasn't for every use case, right? There are a lot of different applications for the cloud. Where did we see the most common use cases for the cloud? As we talked to these organizations, very few were lifting and shifting their existing infrastructure to the cloud. Uh, rather, they were picking one or two kind of innovative areas that they wanted to do more in, and they were working in the cloud to do that. So uh, the most prevalent use case was actually around patient engagement. Uh, so in AWS, they, they were leveraging the infrastructure and the platform layers to help develop their own patient engagement apps. In some cases, they were also leveraging AWS's uh, cloud native apps to do uh, patient outreach through either uh, text bots or chat bots. And so they were able to engage with patients in different ways that they had not done before. Yeah, and I thought it was interesting that, um, uh, especially with the pandemic, with COVID, um, uh, there were some instances and in, on calls that I had where they actually needed to get out to patients very, very quickly. And they had to have an outreach to a lot of those patients. And, and having the ability to leverage a technology that was much quicker for them to get up and, and, and have technologies that could enable them to do the texting and to, to do the outreach. It seemed like it had a huge impact. Yeah, it was really cool to see uh, what these organizations were able to do and how quickly they were able to do it uh, in light of the pandemic and whatnot. So right. uh, really, really good testimony to what can be achieved as organizations leverage the power of the cloud. Talk to me a little bit about uh, genomics, because I know that genomics was one, one, one use case that, uh, that both of us had visibility into, and, and boy, a lot of impact with genomics. Yeah, so we interviewed two organizations in particular that had chosen to do genomics in the cloud with AWS. And the cool thing about that was they felt they could not have done genomics were they not to use the cloud. So it was too cost prohibitive for them to set up their own data center and to get the, the, the computational power that they really needed to sequence right. these genomes. Uh, by leveraging the cloud, they were able to set up faster and they were able, they said, we think we can sequence these genomes now 20, eight to 20 times faster. So by leveraging the power of the cloud, they were able to do that. Uh, and they said, were it not for that, we'd, uh, we'd not be doing genomics today. Right. So when you think about where healthcare is headed, and where precision medicine is going, uh, the ability to leverage uh, the cloud to do those sequences is really important. Yeah, I know, I know with one of these healthcare organizations, they were actually using um, this data from the genomics uh, uh, sequencing data actually to help them with care with, uh, in a pediatric environment. And so um, amazing, not only was it helpful for them um, to look in arrears, but also very, very helpful in, in terms of uh, almost real-time uh, you know, uh, pediatric care that they were providing, which I thought was uh, fascinating. So it's really starting to move upstream and have a, a bigger impact in patient yeah. care. Yeah, and as you think about the ability to spin up and spin down their infrastructure in right. the cloud, uh, they can really have some cost savings by doing that, by not always having to have the, the infrastructure going at full speed. So they're really able to save cost and, and resources by leveraging the cloud. 
So are a couple of other use cases that we saw that were kind of common. I know that um, uh, you know, product development seemed to be a, a, a popular use case as well. We, we saw people leverage kind of the full stack from AWS quite frequently. So mm -hmm. starting with the infrastructure layer, right. moving to the development layer or platform services above that. And then obviously there's the application layer where you can leverage some of AWS's inherent right. apps. Uh, but a lot of organizations said, you know what, we're gonna go tackle new and innov innovative things in the cloud. And they said for us in healthcare, uh, in order to differentiate ourselves from our neighbors, right. from our competitors in the, the industry, we need to be able to innovate. And they saw AWS's platform as a great environment to help them innovate. They felt that they could push uh, updates to their apps faster, that right. they were able to code and, and do all the things they needed to to test their software uh, and solutions and apps just faster through AWS. And so because of that, they felt this was a key differentiator for them in the marketplace that they were able to innovate using AWS's tool set. You know, and, 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 and clearly I think that it's important that, uh, that everyone knows that there were some use cases where people were leveraging it for IT infrastructure. And, and, and really for storage space and certainly for some other things as well. Um, but, but not as top of mind as, as we, I think, thought going in. Yeah, everybody was leveraging the, this infrastructure layer pretty yeah. much to do something, but it wasn't for their full environment. The so there, they still had right. on-premise data centers. Right. Uh, so rather what they were doing is maybe innovating and developing an app, and they would s store the, the data they needed for that app in the cloud. And so new projects and things, they'd move to the cloud, but they weren't really tackling or, or trying to lift and shift everything into this AWS environment. They were, they were being very uh, measured about their approach and only moving those things that made the most sense into the cloud. Yeah, it seemed like, uh, uh, John, most of, the, most of those that we interviewed were kind of in a, a, kind of a hybrid environment. Um, we saw them you know, with, with some stuff on premise, some stuff that was in the cloud. In a few instances, we actually saw a multi-cloud environment. Um, and, and then in a few instances, it seemed like they were really leveraging AWS predominantly for um, maybe just a few point solutions that they were, they were using to help them with outreach and so forth. So kind of fascinating to watch, uh, to watch that. So Mike, in your interviews, as you talk to organizations, uh, you just mentioned hybrid cloud yeah. and setup and, and getting started. What was some of the biggest challenges that organizations encountered as they moved to the cloud? Boy, that's a good question. You know, um, I, I think one of them is that this is new, right? This is a new environment. And so really getting the organization to buy into it, it was, was, was one of those challenges, right? And so, um, so, in the calls that I had, they recommended that you really slow down and take time to understand what people's concerns were and then, and then put in the time and effort up front to make sure they were, they were okay with, with the move. There were people that were concerned about security and privacy. Um, we also had some people in the IT department that were frankly concerned about their job. You know, if, if we move to AWS, what's that gonna do to me and my job and my role? And so being able to take time to really help people understand what your goals and objectives were, and, and also helping them understand that by using AWS, it allowed them, it would allow these employees to focus on other things that perhaps might even be more exciting, um, seemed to be really uh, one of the things that many were, were working to do. The other thing that, I, that we found is that um, uh, there were times when people got into it, they, they said, I wish we would have known up more up front. And so making sure that you either have a partner that really understands what you're trying to do, or make sure that you build your own um, your own level of understanding with your own team of, uh, of what cloud is and how to work in cloud. Um, in a couple of instances, they were already well down the path and they realized they should have architected things a little bit differently. And, uh, and that really caused some challenges um, and, and, and forced them to go back and do optimization type of projects to help um, fix and resolve some of those challenges. Yeah, so you described that organizations needed to get even buy-in within the IT department to do yeah. that, not just across you know, cross-functional teams or the right. executive suite. They have to get buy-in of their own employees as well. Uh, something that was really interesting is I talked to uh, some of these, these organizations was the fact that they were looking uh, to partner deeply with AWS, and they found that they needed to align with AWS as well, not just within their own organization, but with AWS right. externally as well, to make sure that they were all in lockstep as they started these projects. Yeah, the other, the other thing that I think was pointed out, and I, I think you touched on this earlier, was um, really understanding the right way to use um, the cloud, right? 
Um, we, I, I had one uh, a CTO that I interviewed um, at a healthcare organization who just emphasized how important it is to really realize that this is a great environment for innovation, um, but not a great environment to move your, your legacy applications. And you know what? It can work, but, but from a cost savings perspective and an efficiency perspective, if you already have sunken costs, um, just let, let it live its life. And when it, when it comes time to replace it, then that might be the time when you really do consider um, whether or not it makes sense to move to the cloud. Yeah, I had the same, very same perspective from others that I interviewed that was right. wait until you have a project and then evaluate on a project by project basis whether or not this should be in the cloud or on-prem uh, rather than lift and shift really look right. at and evaluate the, the advantages of leveraging the cloud and whether it makes sense to use the, you know, the, the full resources that are available to you there in the cloud or if you could do this uh, on-prem. Um, what about AWS from, from your vantage point? I mean, what were the strengths and weaknesses of AWS in terms of just their performance? Yeah, so AWS really brings a, a very strong tool set to, or toolkit for their, right. their customers. Not, not only do they offer infrastructure as a service uh, and the, the development tools, but they also have some very good application services that you can leverage as well as, as part of your engagement with them. So we saw organizations that were using uh, the, the texting capabilities that they, they could get with AWS. Uh, as, as a whole, people generally regarded the, the technology and the solutions that AWS provided as, as one of the key strengths of, of working with them. Right. Uh, in some cases, they felt like they could get uh, a little bit better guidance. Maybe the, the support would be uh, a little bit stronger. Uh, it wasn't poor by any means. It was yeah. still quite good, but they felt like there could have been a little bit deeper partnership uh, with right. AWS. Uh, but overall, they felt like they were having a very good experience thus far. So it sounds like technology was very strong. It sounds like service and support could be better. Yeah. I wouldn't say right. it's poor. Like I said, yeah, it's, no, it's not it's necessarily good, poor, but, but it could but, be even better. But it could be even better to help support and, and strengthen these guys. Where uh, w decisions, right? We took a look at some of the decisions that were being made, uh, and and why they decided to choose AWS over some other organizations. What were some of the common reasons why they decided to choose AWS instead of some of the other you know, leading players in the market? Yeah, it really depends on when the organization had made the decision right. to, to go to the cloud. So organizations that had made the decision to go probably four or more years ago, they said right. they felt that AWS was really the only kind of competitive solution in town for what they were hoping to do. They, they felt like it was the only yeah. really strong solution on the market. Uh, now there's a little bit more competition with other public cloud providers and what they're offering, uh, but organizations really look to AWS for that technology stack right. and felt like that they were superior for what they were trying to achieve uh, when it came to the infrastructure and the platform right. services, uh, but then also the, the overarching applications that you could leverage on top of that. So, so what does the future hold? What, what, what were these people planning on for the future as it relates to cloud? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. As they look to the future, they're really hoping, uh, there weren't that many organizations actually that said, we want to be fully cloud enabled uh -huh. uh, or in a full cloud environment were, in the there next were two, there were couple two or years. Three, right? uh, but, but it was, it felt like it was, it, this was going to be a journey it, over the next like five years. Well, and if you know right. anything about healthcare, uh -huh. people say this is going to be a five-year journey, and then five years later you ask them about yeah. it, and it's still another five-year right. journey. So uh, we see cloud is going to take a while before it becomes predominant in healthcare. It, it's definitely making inroads. We're doing some research around imaging in the cloud right now, and there's right. organizations that are, are seeing returns on their investment there. So it, it is becoming more and more prevalent as use cases for the cloud are, are popping up. But uh, a lot of these organizations say, we are now comfortable enough with the cloud yeah. that the next steps for us is really to look at and evaluate all our go forward projects right. and bring them into the cloud if it makes sense. So I would be very surprised if the majority of these organizations do not use the cloud more and more in the future. I, yeah, it felt like all of them were all planning. of them were planning to do more, to and they were going to be pretty much doing all of their new projects in the cloud, it, it felt like. the their, they're going to evaluate each one, but I would be very shocked if not most of their new projects are done in the cloud. Well, just one last qu question, John. I mean, one of the one of the concerns that people have, and I'm not quite sure what you're going to say about this, but uh, um, is is the cost model, right? It's it's a, a pay-as-you-go type of cost model. I know that's on a lot of people's minds. What uh, what any, anything you can share with uh, with our listeners about um, cost models and and how to how to work through that. 
Well, uh, with cost models, you're moving from a kind of CapEx model to an OpEx model, which yeah. was a challenge for a lot of these organizations. They just have not thought that way uh, with right. uh, from a healthcare technology investment standpoint. It's usually where we're going to pay for it out of our capital budget, and we'll pay for it once up front for the data center or whatever we need, and then we're not going to have to pay on an ongoing basis. Uh, so they really had to shift their mindset and uh, get kind of the CFO on board and, right. and help right. them understand that we are not going to invest in huge things up front, so we're going to smooth our cost over time. Yeah. Uh, and for some, like I said, the genomics programs that we talked to, this allowed them now to essentially open new areas for their, their healthcare organization right. that they could uh, provide services in because without doing it that way, the, the initial cost of investment it's was just too, too prohibitive. Right. Uh, so you have to go through that process and you, there has to be a shift in mindset of how you tackle it. Uh, it's not something that organizations are, are comfortable with. Uh, but uh, as, as you talk through it and you think about it, uh, don't just focus on what the costs are going to be, but think of what the new opportunities would be as well that is, right. are open to you if you use this new kind of model. Yeah, so it is It is certainly a shift. And, and uh, I know that there are some, to your point, that uh, seem to be uh, you know apprehensive in, in some cases, in just a couple of cases with one of the interviews that I had. Um, one of the clients, just one of the healthcare organizations indicated that some of their providers um, tended to not use it as much because they were concerned about what the costs were and they weren't always certain what, what, what their costs were going to come in as. Yeah, and, and a few organizations that I interviewed, they said that initially there was some, some challenges with uh, kind right. of cost overruns, yeah. uh, but they said AWS has been very good to work with them right. recently where if, if they had, uh, you know, kind of a rogue Right. Rogue employee who forgot or wasn't uh -huh. watching their usage and, and the, the cost kind of shot up pretty quickly on them that they would essentially kind of forgive that and say, OK, yeah. let's let's train you, make sure you understand how the cost structure is set up and help you operate within the parameters that make sense right. for you. Right. Well, fantastic. Wonderful, uh, wonderful insights. Yeah. Uh, so, Mike, tell me what's uh, what's next for cloud research here at class? Well, that's a good question, John. Um, we are planning actually this to be the first in a series of reports on uh, on cloud, and so hopefully over the next few months we'll actually be doing in-depth research on a couple of the other key players uh, in healthcare. Uh, if you're interested in this in, in information on AWS in healthcare or information on any other research that Class has done, please go to classresearch.com forward slash reports. Uh, or you can, uh, you can email us at uh, info at classresearch.com. Thank you.